So you want to learn the killing curse in Hogwarts Legacy. Well, you've come to the right place. I've got a complete guide for you to unlocking all three unforgivable curses, Crucio, Imperio, and Avada Kedavra. It's quite the journey. It's heavy. Just, just know going into it. It's emotional. It's pretty crazy. I really, really enjoyed it. And it's also not going to come quickly. Just a little disclaimer here at the start. It's going to take quite a while. It takes quite a few side missions. You're not going to get Avada Kedavra till towards the end of the game. I got Avada Kedavra at level 27 with 25 hours played. Now, I think you can do it a little bit quicker if you really hyper focus on it. But just know you're not going to get it very early. It's going to be towards the end. So one of the first students you meet at school is Sebastian Sallow. He's our Slytherin companion. You're either going to meet him in the common room if you're in Slytherin house, or you'll duel him in Defense Against the Dark Arts class. You guys quickly hit it off. He's a lot of fun, very outgoing, also has a knack for getting in trouble. One of the first missions you do together is sneaking into the restricted section of the library. So you just kind of follow the main storyline a bit. You get to know each other. You go on a couple of adventures, and eventually he invites you back to his hometown to his house and you learn his story he's got a twin sister named Anne, and when they were young their parents died so they've been raised by their uncle now naturally that brought them even closer together than being twins Anne is basically his best friend and unfortunately Anne was cursed by a goblin and she now has a debilitating injury she'll just double over in pain randomly they can't control it they can't figure it out they've taken her to the hospital nobody has any answers and it's slowly withering her away inside and out she's dying and that's pretty much sebastian's main focus and goal in life is to figure out how to help Anne. and uh he figures because the goblin curse was dark magic he's gonna start looking into the dark hearts. Everything we've talked about so far has been on the main quest line. So just follow the main missions until you get to this point. And then from here is where you branch off onto a side quest line. It's called the In the Shadow quest line. So look out for missions with In the Shadow in the name. And honestly, it's probably my favorite quest line in the game. It is really, really good. It is exciting, scary, heartbreaking. Like I, I absolutely loved it. And even if you don't want to learn the curses, which if you're watching this video, you probably want to, you can still play this quest line without learning the curses along the way. Just highly recommend it. Now we get to the fun part. So in the shadow of the bloodline is the name of the very first side mission you need to do. You're going to go meet up with Sebastian and Ominous Gaunt. Now Ominous Gaunt is a fellow Slytherin. He is a longtime family friend of the Sallows of Sebastian and Anne, and he also happens to be a descendant of Salazar Slytherin. Sebastian and Ominous are arguing because Sebastian wants to get into Salazar Slytherin's study. It's called the Scriptorium. It's kind of like a secret hideout in the school. He thinks there's a key to solving Anne's problem in that study, and Ominous knows how to get to it. Now, Ominous is saying, no, I'm not going anywhere near this. I don't want to touch this. He's actually a very, very good kid, wants nothing to do with his family, does not agree with them at all, so he doesn't want to help. They're kind of bickering, going back and forth, and eventually Eventually, Ominous agrees to making it happen, and that's where you get the In the Shadow of the Study mission, which is where you learn Crucio, and the suggested level is 16. So like I said, I, these things don't come quick. Level 16 is fairly significant. In this mission, you're navigating a labyrinth, doing a couple of puzzles and things, and the final test to get into the scriptorium is you have to cast Crucio. Salazar Slytherin did not want anyone who wasn't bad enough at heart to cast it to get into his office. So this is where it gets really interesting. You can see you've got choices here. You can say, I don't want to learn it. So that's where Sebastian will cast it on you. You can say, I want to learn it, but you must cast it on me. Or you can say, teach me and I'll cast it on you. So it's really interesting. You always have a choice of whether or not you want to learn the spell, how you want it to work. It's all based on where your conscience and your emotions and things are at. So in this case, I said, I want to learn it, but cast it on me. And we end up getting into the scriptorium. I don't want to get too much into like spoilers and things because again the quest line's really good but basically sebastian finds what he was looking for from here time has to pass before you're going to be able to get the next curse so just do some main missions or whatever and eventually you're going to get the invite to the next big side mission which is in the shadow of time it's a level 17 recommended and you learn imperio sebastian's discovery in the scriptorium has led him to a catacomb out in the middle of nowhere and man this place is bad news. It's very cursed, and as you're going through it, you do have the chance to learn the Imperious Curse. And uh, naturally, I did, and it, honestly, I think it's one of the best curses, if not the best curse in the game. So uh, basically, this catacomb is like a giant dungeon. There's spiders, there's devil snare, there's 
desecrating human remains to create archways and portals. It's like, it, it's bad. And as you could kind of tell, like, things start to go downhill here. I wasn't expecting this to be as emotional as it was, but I mean, there's weight to the decisions you're making. You're seeing your friend start to deteriorate and become obsessed with finding this this cure for Anne that may or may not exist. You're seeing people starting to treat each other differently. Like, it's honestly kind of hard to watch. I wasn't ready for it to be as heavy as it was. After you complete that mission again, you've got to pass some time. You've got to wait until he hits you up again for the next one. Do every little in the shadow thing that pops up. And the final big mission is called In the Shadow of the Relic, which is where you learn about a cadaver and it's a recommended level of 28. So again, I, I mean, I learned of Vada Kedavra right before the end of the game. Basically, in this one, you go back to the catacomb, all hell has broken loose. You see just how dark and manipulative and, and just utterly destroying these spells are to people. And uh, again, it's just, it's very powerful. You see Sebastian use a Vada Kedavra. It was one of the coolest moments in the game, also one of the saddest moments. And then afterwards, he teaches it to you. And I thought it was really cool that the, the spell shape is the, you know, lightning bolt Harry Potter scar. Now, as for the spells themselves, honestly, Crucio isn't that good. It does a very little bit of damage up front and then does a little bit of damage over time. The best part about it is it does cause the enemy to double over in pain, so they won't attack you for a minute, but it's not that good unless you pair it with Avada Kedavra, which we'll talk about in a second. Imperio, on the other hand, is I think one of the best spells in the game. It's the mind control curse, so you can turn an enemy into a friendly temporarily and they will start attacking other enemies. One of my favorite instances is casting this on an enemy troll and then seeing their own troll just beat up everything. It's amazing. So Imperio is really good. And then of course, Avada Kedavra is the killing curse. It's as OP as OP gets. It doesn't matter what you're casting it at, it dies in one shot. Avada Kedavra. But wait, there's more. You can basically combine all three spells and piggyback them into one ultimate Avada Kedavra, I guess you could call it. So there are talents in your Dark Arts talents called Imperio Mastery, Crucio Mastery, and Avada Kedavra Mastery. And basically what these do is Imperio and Crucio Mastery make it so that when you curse somebody with that, you continue to spread the curse to everyone else in the area. And then Avada Kedavra Mastery makes it so that everyone who's cursed dies. So the little green X means somebody's cursed. Basically, if you're in a big group of enemies, you get everyone with the green X on them. Then you cast Avada Kedavra and you team wipe the entire place, which is a pretty cool moment. So um, yeah, there you guys have it. That is how to get the unforgivable curses here in Hogwarts Legacy. It is a fantastic journey. It's a lot of fun. I highly recommend you do it, whether you want to learn the curses or not. To be honest, I highly recommend you learn the curses because they're just fun to use. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to see you guys in our Let's Play. Make sure you guys keep checking back. Tons of videos coming soon. Catch you all later. Peace out.